welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides me for tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out. All their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today is the third and final installment of Barrett's Icker Moon Trophy Challenge. Patreon subscriber Barrett gave me three leagues to try to go 5-0 with a Planeswalker control deck built around Icker Moon Gauntlet. Seeing as it's episode number three, clearly the first two did not trophy. The second deck was better than the first one, and I've made some significant innovations to this one. The previous versions were blue-white and had no creatures in the main deck. They had to win with Planeswalkers, and there was no third color. I have shattered both of those boundaries by including a third color, and that color casts Orcish Bowmasters. I know, yawn, controversy, etc. This suggestion came directly from Barrett before anyone yells at me for diverting from the, the challenge or cheating on the challenge. This is from the challenger. It's his money. And this is basically a practical innovation. Orcish Bowmaster is obviously a very good card against decks full of permanents that can take damage that are also trying to draw cards. Orcish Bowmaster is a good answer to Orcish Bowmaster, as everyone who plays Legacy knows and is probably sick of hearing. This also provides a second dimension of being able to win the game that also happens to still work with Icker Moon Gauntlet because the Orc army does have plus one counters on it and you can proliferate those. It's on theme, checkmate nerds. Additionally, what the third color does is gives us Prismatic Ending. I had been playing March of Otherworldly Light in this spot, and that card is much worse than Prismatic Ending. Ending is not worth playing if you can't get at least three colors into it, and we're now at the minimum threshold to play this card. I'm excited for that upgrade. I also got to add Kaya Orzov Usurper, now that we have black. Exile two cards from a graveyard. You can gain two life if a creature was exiled this way. Minus one, exile target non-land permanent with mana value one or less. That's your Delver, your Dragon's Rage Channeler, your Chalice of the Void, your Saga Token, etc., etc. Just more generic good removal for things is what the Black has given us here. And that has been what the deck's been missing. It's really tough to counter or bounce everything. And if you want to put money on the line... To get a 5-0 result, you have to be willing to innovate, rather than just keep banging your head against the same wall. That's where we are now. This is now Esper, Icker Moon Gauntlet, Planeswalker Control, final chance to get a trophy. Let's get in there. Win your spot in the World Series of Poker main event in Las Vegas. Club GG is providing 100 exclusive packages between April 1st and June 30th for those who want to test their skills against the best. Each package includes the $10,000 main event entry fee plus $2,000 for travel. Use code BOSCH for a free 7-day premium membership that includes entry to these satellite tournaments. Round 1, I'm on the play. I'm going to keep because I have Island and Ponder, and those are the rules. I might not play Ponder, but I am going to keep on the strength of it. Having two Surveil Lands in the deck really changes what I'm willing to do with a Fetch Land on turn 1. I think I'm just going to Flooded Strand Pass here. Bona kept 7 as well. Scalding Tarn. For Volcanic Island and Delver of Secrets. Okay. Now I have to decide if I want to fetch basics or get the Meticulous Archive. I'm going to get the Archive and get the selection. I don't have that many basics in this build of the deck. I have to keep that Underground Sea hilariously because I don't play that many Black Sources. I'm going to brainstorm here and try to get this Underground Sea back in the deck. Not ready for a Gauntlet. Don't want this Underground Sea yet. Fetch for a basic island and cast ponder. I could still get basic planes. I'm looking for white removal at this point or some planeswalker to take over. Just three more lands here. I can shuffle those. And brainstorm was recovered. The blue white build of this deck is naturally strong against a lot of what Delver's trying to do. However, I moved one of the supreme verdicts to the sideboard. I have fewer basic lands. I'm a little more susceptible to what Delver wants to be doing with this three color build. Delver did not flip. Grixis, just 
main phasing of Bowmaster here. I'm going to force this Exiling Brainstorm. I don't want this card in play, and if they do win this fight, I just can't afford to cast that Brainstorm anyway. Cool. All right. Worth it. They could have dazed that, and it would have been devastating if they did. I could try to stick Narset here. I'm more interested in this Ponder. I've seen a lot of lands right now. I'll take this other Ponder. And I'm going to cast this again. Look at a new card. Wandering Emperor is dope. Okay, I'll take that Wandering Emperor. That one's got some heat on it. There's an Arset on top of my deck that I don't really want. Delver flipped revealing days. Okay, now I know. In for three. I'm going to get the other Surveil land here. Unless they stifle me. Okay, Bowmaster. That's annoying too. Be a great time to find that Supreme Verdict that's in my deck somewhere. Undercity Sewers. I'll take a Bowmaster. Pop that right on the tippity top. And I'm going to main phase this thing. Fetching in response. Probably going to see a brainstorm here. Both to get it out of the way and also maybe find an answer to this Bowmaster. Brainstorm happened, then force pitching Stifle. Stifle confirmed to exist in the deck. Annoying. I can Wandering Emperor around the days unless they wasteland me. Mr. Reinforce is not wasteland. Last I checked. I am at 6, double bolt range, Merktide range, DRC, non delirious. That's good news. Supreme Verdict? Here come Moon Gauntlet. Alright, that's kind of like Supreme Verdict, except awful. Okay, I could just exile Delver right now. What does that do? Wandering Emperor dies immediately. I think we're going to fetch in their upkeep. 3, 4, 5. I fetched a 5, go to 7. I'm not doing great here. Is the problem. You're fetching now. I'm fetching now. Get a basic planes. Waiting here did them, give them the opportunity to have force blue card. Let's hope they don't have that. Here's one of the dazes, or the days. They spent mana on that. That's concerning. If they unlock delirium here, even if my spell resolves, that sucks. If they have a second daze, I just lose. If force or if lightning bolt is the last card in their hand, I just lose. Kept their card on top. Well, I will pay. We're in there. Exile Delver of Secrets. Stifle gets me here too. Great. Great. Yeah, okay. Yeah, alright. Stifle being back in the metagame is some horse hockey for an honest gamer like me. Alright, I like Kaya's Guile, Supreme Verdict. Hydroblast. Rest in peace. Celestial Purge. Probably Plague Engineer. Maybe Powder Keg. No Ashiok. No Force of Will. Force of Will goes over here. Building stacks here. Dress down. Not that good. Force of Negation. Definitely out. My neighbors have decided to do yard work right now. Sorry if that you can hear that. There is our machines running. Not far from my window. A Plague Engineer. Outer Keg's in the maybe zone. Jace and Teferi are both mediocre. Teferi is here because it pops off with Aircrow Moon Gauntlet, but it's not a real legacy card. That's for funsies with the deck that we're playing. Then I could cut Jace for Powder Keg. Dovin's actually pretty good against Delver, making their instants and sorceries cost more. Highly effective. I'm going to stop like this. I'll keep the Jace and leave one removal spell not boarded in. Nope, changed my mind. I'm, I'm bringing in the Powder Keg. Jace costs four. Not doing that against Delver. Stop. Access to basic planes is here. All my colors are here. I can ponder. I'm doing it. Bone and to six. I'm going to ponder. Mostly looking for lands here. Did find a land. It doesn't get basic island, but it plays. I'll take the land. Underground Sea, Delver of Secrets. I can see my microphone picking up my neighbor's lawnmower right now. Deepest apologies. I am not going to play into Days. I am going to Prismatic Ending this thing. This is the worst removal spell in my deck, and it lines up perfectly in exactly this spot. It also shuffles away the Icker Moon Gauntlet in a spot where they can't stifle me. And I will pass the turn. Looking for a spot where I can sneak this brainstorm through without it getting bow mastered. 
the opponent is just passing the turn without a play, I'm going to I'm going to brainstorm. I'd rather play around Stifle because I have two answers to Bowmaster in my hand. They're brainstorming over the top of that. I could fetch in response and Bowmaster now. But I'm going to fetch in response. I'm just getting wild here. I have to get Scrubble in. That's awkward. Whatever. I'm in. I've played this far. Bowmaster. Now Daze is on, but we're in their end step and they missed a land drop. They could also just Lightning Bolt. Okay. They do have Daze. That's a Daze that they won't be pointing at this Narset. It's also a turn cycle where they're not casting Bowmaster. If I had my land drop lined up, I would not have cast any spells in this end step. Oh no. All right. Well, put back Supreme Verdict and Celestial Purge. And then I'm going to ponder and try to hit a land. Come on, Basic Island. We did it. All right. I'll take this Basic Island. Wish I could have just shoved Narset here on this board, but was not meant to be. When it replayed a land that was not the land they picked up before. My top card is Gideon. Do I want that? I'm going to fetch now. It didn't get stifled. Good news. Dovin, Hand of Control. What's up, buddy? This card is fun because I don't really mind if it's countered, and it's also just really good if it sits in play. They're fetching in response. I have Telegraph Swords to Plowshares with the way I tap my mana. But I would rather have it if I need it than Telegraph it or like try to pretend I don't have it. Hey, we got a Pyroblast on Dovin instead of Narset. Brainstorm. And Ponder. Do not shuffle. There's a land. And a Bobble. Under City Sewers. Pretty good. I will cast Narset. If they have Pyroblast, they have Pyroblast. I've played around days. I've also made this Bobble more awkward. Because it hasn't popped yet. Pyroblast confirmed. Under City Sewers. Meticulous Archive. Do I want to keep riding this donkey? I guess I do. They have three cards in hand. It'll be five after this bobble triggers. They have two removal spells. One of them's conditional, hits two thirds of the cards in their deck. The other hits all their cards. They can't take me off a of color with one wasteland, which is good because they have a wasteland. I'm going to float black because they can just change phases and I don't get to cast a spell anyway. And I want them thinking about the wrong things. Dragon's Rage Channeler. That's purgeable. Yeah, I'm going to start with Brainstorm. I can answer Bowmaster in a variety of ways. Here's this. I'm going to purge it. They didn't have Force Blue card as their last two cards. Good news. Okay, Icar Moon Gauntlet. It's not time for that. I could. I think I just have to cycle the Lorien revealed here. I could even get Meticulous Archive, which is the same as just playing Meticulous Archive, except I don't lose Lorien revealed. I could just cast Ponder, Shuffle, and then play Archive. Yeah, I think I'm going to cast Ponder. Wandering Emperor. I like that, actually. The information has changed. They don't Shuffle the Wandering Emperor. Do put Ikram and Gauntlet in the graveyard. Sorry, Gauntlet. I think we can agree you got to go here. We're in a tight spot against Delver. Ponder. Into Misty Rainforest. Did not Shuffle their Ponder. Made a land drop. Orcish Bowmasters face up. That's good against the Lorien revealed. I just put on top of my deck. Make it in for five here. There are not very many cards that counter Wandering Emperor from this position. I'm just going to play this now before they can force blue card. If they have Stifle, they're just going to get me. Exile the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, we're through that. That wasteland that they did earlier coming in big because now I can't follow up plow to protect my emperor. And they are splitting their attacks two on me, one on emperor. Delver, come on, Supreme Verdict. This is the time for that card. Tundra. Well, I can plow Bowmaster and then cast Lorien Revealed. If their last card in hand is Bowmaster, I am wrecked. Days and Pyroblast are also good. But if it's just like a lightning bolt or something, this plays great. Stop. They tapped mana. All right, they had Pyroblast. Okay. Well, I am dead in somewhere between three and two hits. Delver missed. 
I got a lot of big draws in my deck. We're just in haymaker mode now. Come on, deck. No shitters. Brainstorm. No shitters. No bowmaster. Come on, you drew one card. You drew one card. How is it that one? This sucks. All right, yeah, whatever. You win. The trophy is dead. That was unsatisfying and shitty. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. Round two on the draw. I will keep this hand. It has lands and planeswalkers to play. Barbarian ring. Okay. Playing against some burn. I think I played against this person earlier today. Oh yeah, definitely played against this person earlier today in a different league. They beat me then too. Goblin guide, huh? Two of them on turn one off of a Simeon Spirit Guide. I think this game is basically already over. All right, ponder. A bunch of stuff that doesn't help here. Shuffle that. Source of Plowshares. That will stop one of these Goblin Guides after it's already dealt four damage to me. Pretty good rate of return. Goblin Guide, Revealed Lorien. Lava Spike. Yeah, I can play this Tundra and pass the turn. A first Goblin Guide trigger, it hit a Swords to Plowshares, alright. Which makes it awkward because now I don't want to shuffle. Though Gideon is pretty good. I could shuffle for Ponder, or for Tundra right now. Alright, I'm going to go for Gideon here. And I'm going to get the Tundra now. So Goblin Guide has a second chance of revealing a land. Revealed Supreme Verdict, sweet. Damn it, seven. Gideon of the Trials. Get in there, cause trouble. I could emblem Gideon, and then they have to kill him before they can actually win the game by any means. But I think I should freeze the Goblin Guide this turn, get Gideon out of easy bolt range, and then hope I don't get burned out right now. All right, I'm at four. Perfect. Most three card combinations with two mana in their deck can deal four damage. Hey, they did not. Attack, Underground Sea, and I am going to Emblem Gideon. Okay, now they actually have to deal 4 damage to that, and 4 damage to me, and they have to get through this Wandering Emperor who's going to eat this Goblin Guide and put me to 6. This just got slightly interesting, from not interesting to very interesting. And they cast no cards in a full turn cycle with 2 mana. I wonder if they have a handful of Fire Blasts right now. Brainstorm's on top of my deck. I'm just going to exile this thing and gain two life. They were attacking Gideon. Now I'm at six and Gideon's at four, so functionally I'm at ten. Oh baby, Gideon with the hard carry. Let's go. Okay, now what? Hydro Blast comes in. Celestial Purge comes in. These cards do not. This card does not. Kaya's Guile. Gain four life is one of the modes on that. In you go. Damping Sphere, Powder Keg, Null Rod, none of those cards are coming in. I got four spots here. Supreme Verdict is dangerously, stupidly slow. This is not a great matchup for Orcish Bowmasters. It does trade with Goblin Guides and Monastery Swift Spears, though. Or Chumps really hard. I like those things. Dress Down, not great. Teferi, not great. Jace actually seems good. Kaya can gain life. Dovin can slow them down and... Prevent damage. I like all my force effects. I do like my spot removal. Probably down one Bowmaster. Or, no, Teferi Time Raveler is worse than Bowmaster. Let's go. Even though the Trophy Dream is dead and we failed the challenge, that was still the best Gideon of the Trials has ever been in all of my time playing this deck. I've done these three leagues and then I this challenge was inspired by a league I did a year or two ago. And in four leagues, approaching 20 matches with this style of deck, that's the first time a Gideon Emblem has mattered ever. Suspended Rift Bolt. Okay. And me without a Teferi. Me with a Gideon, though. Under City Sewers. 
Kicker Moon Gauntlet, you're out of here. Which is a shame because I'm probably going to pitch the other one if I need to Force of Will. And then that's just not a game plan. But we're playing against Burn. I got to do what I got to do. Lightning Bolt. I'm just taking that. Sacred Foundry. Idle on this one, I'll fight over. Pitch this Icker Moon Gauntlet. Sorry, Gauntlet. I love you, but this is not the matchup for you. Okay, Brainstorm to try to hit land three sounds better than try to hope that Bowmaster lines up against their to this point creatureless draw. Dovin's cool, Narset's cool, Gideon's cool. I could just burn off the Bowmaster. I can also decline to surveil. That's legal. I could also put back the archive and cycle Lauren revealed for a different third land. But the archive's right here. Why would I do that? Should probably decide which planeswalker I'm not casting next turn. Narset's probably the worst one. And I'll leave Bowmaster here and surveil away the Bowmaster. Okay, figured it out. Figured something out. I don't know if it's right, but it happened. I do need to be aware of price of progress as a potential thing that they could do. Going from six basic lands in the blue white build to, I think, three, four, maybe four in this build. It's a lot worse versus pops and wastelands. Now I have a choice. I'm going to fetch basic planes here regardless. That casts all my spells and takes some of the pain off. I'm going to go with Dovin first. Try to slow them down. Stop their crazy like multi-blast turns. All right, yeah, popped for four. Until your next turn, prevent all damage and be dealt to and by target permanent. All right, there's nothing to do with Dovin here that would result in a clever way to prevent damage. Unless their mountain suddenly springs to life. Koth of the hammers me. But now their ones cost two and their twos are uncastable. These are good places to be. Uh, fetching to seven actually feels like it might matter. I'm going to lure in revealed for a basic instead. And Gideon. If I emblem Gideon, they do have to spend effort bolting him. But if I plus Gideon, it's so easy to deal. Three damage to a Gideon, though. All right, I'm just going to plus on their Sacred Foundry. When Gideon was in Standard, I played a blue-white control mirror match against a brand new player, which is not the player you hand blue-white control to, by the way. And I plused my Gideon on their land, and they were like, that doesn't deal damage. And I was like, it doesn't matter. And we had a weird conversation about that. They just like didn't believe that that was the thing. Okay. Ooh. That's a good answer to that. Gideon's going to emblem here. And I can prismatic ending this Roiling Vortex. Do I care about Roiling Vortex now? Is the question, though. Probably not. When I could just stick Narset and get to work. Narset activation. Celestial Purge and Teferi Time Raveler. I can purge the Vortex. I can also end the Vortex. I'm going to take Purge. Fetch a basic. And I'm going to end the Vortex rather than Purge it, because Purge is an instant and will hit all the same cards in their deck that Prismatic Ending does. All right, I can't gain life in this turn in response. You got me. Okay, functionally 10 life, counting the Gideon. Both my Gauntlet's gone, so I can't start popping off. There's no, like, there's no pop-off card here. It's just more Planeswalkers and trying to win somehow. Chain Lightning, my face... Finding protection for Gideon will be important here. If I can Narset into a Hydroblast, that's a good one. Narset, find me the goods. Found another Narset. That's not really what I want here. I think I'd rather ponder. Wandering Emperor, I like you. I do not shuffle my library. I can make Gideon a 4-4 four four and start attacking. Or I could prevent all damage that Barbarian Ring would deal next turn which also incidentally makes Gideon larger and not fire blastable. I guess that deals one damage to them. Or it doesn't deal damage to them when they tap it now. Yeah, maybe I was just supposed to let them have that. Free money. Look at that. So smart. I know my top two cards are fetch lands, and you can't pay life that you don't have. Even if I can't lose the game, paying one life to sacrifice a fetch land is not a cost I can absorb if I don't have any life. I'm going to exile the Swiss Spear for that reason. Get after that. It didn't do anything else. 
Okay, Gideon's going to become a 4-4, four, four, which also gives me a target for Wandering Emperor. Plus one counter on target creature. Gains first strike. Now Gideon's a big old unit with plus one counters and loyalty counters on him. Watch out. Respect the Gids. If they have Swords to Plowshares or Path to Exile or some shit, and I just played into it by activating this, I'm going to be pretty bummed. Your opponent's at 9, and I don't think I'm going to cast any of my spells here. Hold up. Joblin Guide. This is attacking Gideon. I'm going to Bowmaster this thing. Wait, do I have Lethal? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, I do. All right. I'm just going to poke their face instead and Celestial Purge this thing. That was a miscalculation. Should have done the math before I started tapping mana. We did it. We beat Burn with Gideon of the Trials as MVP. Let's go. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing magic. On the draw in round three with an Island Ponder Keep. Done. Opponent's on six. A Chrome Mox. We might be dead. With a red card under it. Please play Blood Moon. Nope. Goblin Rabble Master. That sucks. All right, Swords of Plowshares off the top, and we're still playing. Learn Revealed is not Swords of Plowshares, according to the rules. Force of Will with Brainstorm under it. I will keep this. This Rabble Master is still going to be a problem, but I have Force Blue card now. I have a way to sweep up if my life total holds up, and I get three fresh looks at Swords of Plowshares next turn. Shatter Skull. Simeon Spirit Guide. All right, well, I'm not forcing willing a Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm not even going to do the math. On pr principle, I won't do it. That probably takes a turn off the clock or something important, but I can't. Literally can't. Okay, my top card's Narset. I could fetch first and see three new cards. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage next turn, which means when I fetch him at two, I think I need as many looks as possible. Yeah, I'm going to fetch for Tundra first, and then cast my Brainstorm. Come on, B-Storm. Swords to Plowshares delivered. Okay. Saying there's a chance. Put back Polluted Delta and Wandering Emperor. And I'll pass the turn. But now I'm taking four this turn instead of ten. That's a better number for me, personally, at this phase of my life. This Cavern of Souls is awful for me, though. How about stop? Okay. Plow the Rabble before combat. And four damage coming through. Taking it. I draw Wandering Emperor. Play Flooded Strand. I can lure and reveal to save damage off of a fetch land, because I'm going to four here. Fetch to three. Then I gotta play Wandering Emperor to stabilize. I hate this Cavern of Souls. I worked so hard to get these forces in my hand, and now they just don't even matter. Opponent's gonna broadside bombardiers me here, some garbage. Goblin matron. Well, I can force this, or I could not. All right, I'm not gonna force this. This thing can't attack right now. It gets swept up in the verdict with everything else. They got battle cry goblin. Uh, uh, they sandbagged the city of traitors. Yep, GG. I was not beating that anyway. That's stupid. Okay. Hydroblast, Plague Engineer. Once again, Kaya's Guile, Supreme Verdict, Celestial Purge. It's a pretty common sideboard plan. Should have just built these in the main deck. Null Rod, Damping Sphere, Powder Keg. Powder Keg is reasonable. They do go wide with tokens, as we saw. I don't really like Damping Sphere. Force of Negation's out. Kaya is out, I think. Dressdown's good. Dovin's out. Shave a Gauntlet. Uh, I hate doing that. Bowmasters isn't exactly great, but it does exist on the battlefield, which is something I, I want from my cards in this matchup. Narset and Teferi are both pretty mid. Narset is kind of a slow dig through time and part of the deck's engine, but also doesn't actually affect what my opponent's doing. Okay, here we go. 
uh, I like brainstorms. I don't like lack of white cards. I do like that I can get basics. This might be reckless and dangerous. Ancient tomb, Chrome Mox, Legion War Boss. I will brainstorm in response. I did find the force. The force is going to pitch the gauntlet. And there's only one in my deck. Sucks to suck. Goodbye. Sorry. And I could save my brainstorm for next turn. Just get basic planes. Take out the Chrome Mox here. I'm never totally sure if I'm supposed to do that in these fair decks. I like plays like that when I'm salt eye beans. Not quite sure if it's right as blue eye control. Well, they have a cavern of souls. And they have a rabble master. That obviously resolves. A brainstorm. Bowmaster Kaya's Guile. Okay, there's a path out of this. Put back Tundra and Polluted Delta. I can challenge this Rebel Master in combat. The second one's going to be trouble, though. Name Sticker Goblin. That sucks. And they hit six. Perfect. Just muxes me. Let me get out of here. Ancient Tomb. Six isn't enough. You need eight mana. Relax. Battle Cry Goblin. And just dumping a million activations into this. That's pretty good. Here comes everything. Then fetch for Underground Sea, play Bowmaster, deal one to Rabble Master, block Rabble Master and 4 1 token. This is what gets me the best trades and saves the most damage. Still at four life. Outer Keg. I'm still dead though. It's exactly not enough. Kaya's Guile can. Gain four life, make them sack a token. I go to eight, and then they attack me for five. If they have a land, I just lose. Guile making them sack a creature and giving me a one one is even worse than gaining four life. Gain four life, make a one one. I go to eight, block battle cry goblin, then I can powder keg next turn, but I don't even get a trade there. Yikes. I think I have to ponder because there's no other play here that results in. Anything. Yeah, I just lose. All right. Uh, I guess I could shuffle and hit Bowmaster. Shuffle. And we're right back to where we started. Which I guess is technically not dead. And back to where we started. Which is technically not dead unless they have any red source. Uh, or that. Okay. Yep. Uh, that That's enough, right? Yeah, because now I can't even take them off. Triggering the Battle Cry Goblin. Yep. All right obliterated by goblins not close to close the nyse open is a prestigious long-running vintage tournament based out of new york city it's returning again this summer june 22nd 2024 in plainview new york this 15 proxy event has a 500 dollars entry that's a lot of money but what are we playing for first place gets a black lotus second through eighth place get time twister time walk and all five moxen at 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. On the draw for round three, or what is this, four? <laughs> They've been so fast. I'm keeping my hand, whatever round this is. Pretty sure it's four. Playing in Cephalid Breakfast, okay. My hand has Force and a Removal Spell in it. That's a good spot to be against Breakfast. Ponder. Pumping the brakes after that quick Shuko. Did not shuffle, though. I'm going to fetch for the Undercity Sewers. Surveil to Fairy Master of Time. I'll actually keep that. It is a blue card for these forces, if nothing else. Ponder. More blue cards for more forces. I like that I can Narset next turn. I'm going to put Ponder in my hand as a pitchable blue card. I have Force, and I have double Force with Swords to Plowshares, and I can cast Narset next turn, which is good against some of the things their deck does. If I cast Narset here, I'm tapping out of Swords to Plowshares. I'm okay with that. Worth the risk. Narset activation. Boring revealed Gideon. Wow. Boss's Oracle's decks are not great against Gideon. I'm taking that. Step through in the end step. Okay, well, they have the combo. I hope they don't have two pieces of interaction for it. They did tutor Illusionist. 
archive. At some percentage of the time, that archive would just hit an arc amoeba. That's so busted. Force pitching to fairy. They force back. I force your force. Do I lose because I tapped out? Force is back on the stack. Illusionist is in the graveyard. We dodged. Drawing a white source is the best thing I can do here. It's not a white source. Supreme verdict. And they scooped it. Nice. Gideon of the trials. Another hard carry. I'm counting in that one as a Gideon win. Plague Engineer on Wizard shuts down their combo. Rest in Peace shuts down their combo. Surgical hits their combo. Kaya's Guile hits their combo. Ashiok hits most of the things their deck does. Powder Keg hits the Urza Saga Juke. I can't go too crazy here. I didn't see enough of their deck to know what else they're doing. Like if they have Stoneforge Mystic or what. Dress Down's good. Bowmaster is good. Prismatic Ending can probably come out. Kaya is a little slow. Teferi's great. Dovin's probably bad. I'm bringing in so much, I don't think I need Force of Negation anymore. I want to leave the Gauntlets alone, even though I should definitely cut one. Isn't a big Wandering Emperor matchup. Teferi Master of Time. Uh, not a Supreme Verdict matchup. If I'm leaving in Gauntlets, I want to leave Teferi. I could go one less Ashiok. Okay, this is the plan. I'm going to keep this hand. It has Ponder in it. Misty Rainforest. Ponder. That's basically the same turn I'm about to have. Did not shuffle. This archive is tempting to use it, but I want to Ponder. I do have a bunch of zero mana interaction that I'm happy to cantrip into here. I missed on that, but I did find Rest in Peace. I could slam Rest in Peace. I could hold up Brainstorm. I'm going to hold up Brainstorm. It's too easy to for them to just force or daze, rest in peace, and then untap and win. And they have to think about so few things. If I have open mana, they have to think about all kinds of removal, bowmaster, everything on top of surgical, force of will. If I tap out for rip and they counter it, all they have to think about is force of will. Multiple brainstorms in the end step. This looks like a Teferi. Nomads. All right. They're going for nomads. And they are going for the combo. They must have protection. And I just have nothing anyway. All right. Well, GG. Oh, if they're afraid of surgical here, why did they just pass priority like that? That would be so weird. Oh, OK. Yeah, here they go. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. And maybe nobody knows. I have to play it out to look at their deck, and then I have more information about if they have Stoneforge Mystics or whatever. Teferi, Orm's Chant, Ball Therapy, Pithing Needle, Triumph of St. Catherine. Okay, good to know. Narc Amoeba, Ball Therapy targeting me. Yep, you got me. Obviously, if they just shove, I'm, I wish I had played the rest in peace, but we don't know that they're going to run it like that. I think I want this force in... In addition to everything else, the very master of time's got to go. Sorry, homie. Yuck. I'm going to keep it, but yuck. Bone of Malta 5. I needed that. Can I have a land? Yes. All right, cool. We're in there. We're gaming. Just jam the Shuko. I would rather protect my swords to plowshares with force negation than fight over Shuko. If they kept a hand that just sends it on two, which is the strength of this deck, Illusionist resolves, and we've moved into combat for reasons unknown. All right, well, Swords to Plowshares. Milled over a Narc Amoeba busted. Glad I did this in the end step, so they couldn't equip that easily. I'm going to fetch the other tap land here. Keep that Swords to Plowshares. Brainstorm. Found my land and a rest in peace. Good stuff. I'm going to put back... Narset and Teferi. I just cast Rest in Peace. Let's at least cut that whole half of the deck off. Or just die to daze. Oh no. I could totally die here. God damn it. If they have a second Illusionist, I actually do lose. Because Force doesn't hit the Illusionist. Uh, I would have to counter the Dread Return. Please don't have it. <laughs> yeah, this is just me tapping out, being stupid. Uh, not acting right. I like to think that if I was 3-0 here, I would have been more careful. Just leave up the plow, play to my outs. 
There's the dread return. It's got to hope there's a Narcomoeba in their hand and they can't afford a Cabal Therapy. Like, that's my only real out here. Oh, well, there's two Narcomoebas, so we've lost. Got to hope the Cabal Therapy's in their hand. Or the Illusionist is. Or the, uh, the Oracle. There's the Therapy. Is the Oracle in your hand? Oh, if they name wrong. If they name Force of Will, or... Okay. We could actually still do this. They have to name Force of Negation. Like, if they name Surgical, they miss. The Force of Negation is the only thing that makes sense. They named Force of Will. I would have just forced the Illusionist. Okay. Now what? Now they attack and pass the turn. All right. All right. Cool. Don't deserve that, but I will take it. If I play Teferi Time Raveler and bounce the Urza Saga, what happens here? Nothing good. I could plow the Illusionist. It also just brainstorm. All right, I'm going to brainstorm. Force of Will is in my hand now. Getting the Trials is not castable forever. But Time Raveler back. Do I even plow this Illusionist? Do I care about it? I don't think so. They still have plenty of cards in their deck to go onto an Urza Saga plan. I'm going to plow the Illusionist. This will mill them for three. And now I have to beat an Urza Saga from 16 life. There is a dress down in my deck. I think I'm supposed to save this to Fairy to bounce a construct. Second main, or not second main, but after the saga has done its thing, Pithy Needle's in the graveyard. Thassa's Oracle is not in the graveyard. It is in here somewhere. I have to watch out for them hard casting that thing. A Narset. Let's hope this functions as a distraction. Jace, Lorian, Ponder. I think among these options, I want Ponder. It's just the, the sleekest thing when I'm looking for a specific answer to a specific problem. They probably don't have any artifacts left to tutor for with Shuko in the graveyard and Needle in the graveyard. Moment of truth. Nope. They do have another Saga, though. I'm taking... Oh, forgot to equip Shuko. Every point matters here, and I'll take that. There was an earlier turn where they didn't move Shuko onto their Narcomoeba either, so I actually have two more life than I'm supposed to right now. Ashiok Game Ender. Do you actually end the game here? I could probably work them into a spot where they have to, where they have uh, four or fewer cards in their deck, and I could surprise Ashiok them out. I'm just slightly worried about the Thassa's Oracle that's still in the deck somewhere. Okay, they remember to equip Shuko. My luck's run out. They did not activate Saga before damage, though, so that's three life. I could be at seven right now. It may not matter, though, if I don't find some action real quick. I'm going to cast Ponder. I need a white card. Uh, these are not the cards I wanted. I do kind of want this land. I don't shuffle that. If I fetch, I go to 9. And then they have 3, 4, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I'm actually going to lose here if I don't find a removal spell. I'm going to fetch for Tundra and cast Ponder. I can leave Bowmaster as an option if I leave up black. Oh, Plague Engineer, you were so close to the Chosen One. Shuffle this. Oh my god. Brainstorm. I need a plow. Oh my freaking god, we are going to lose this game after all that. Uh, the Powder Keg, the Dress Down, the perfect answers to this situation here. It's all there. Except for the part where I'm alive to see it. I don't know, maybe they'll forget to attack. Uh, what? Three, six, seven, eight, nine. They're, they're just making fun of me now. They didn't even want to make the extra construct. They're just like, no, I got you beat with exactly this. I mean, you're not wrong, but you're out of line. Uh, <laughs> ridiculous. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player-owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. On the draw for the final round, I'm going to keep Ancient Tomb, another Ancient Tomb gamer. This one has Chalice of the Void in their deck. 
but I have prismatic ending in my hand, as Richard Garfield intended. But this is eight cast then. The Mishra's bobble kind of gives it away. Okay, Orcus Pro Masters good against eight cast. They're bobbling me. That card will not be there by the time I draw it. Ox Opal, Mishra's bobble. Thoughtcast is online. Lotus Petal. Please let me force a Kappa Ganoneer here. That would be great. All right, now we're just busting bobbles, looking at the same cards again. End step fetch. Got the Undercity Sewers. I will keep a land. I'll need it eventually. Opponent seems to have kept this hand on the strength of Chalice of the Void, because nothing else has happened yet. I'm not even going to remove this, because all the cards that I plan on playing over the next few turns cost 2, 3, etc. I'm just going to play the Bowmaster. Leaving it in my hand doesn't do any good. They can't bobble around it at this point. Time to inflict damage. Prismatic ending the chalice. Whoa, something big's happening in response. Interesting. I'm not even going to fight over this. They were not worried about Bowmaster, but they were worried about me removing their chalice of the void. I'm just going to tuck Ponder next to the Force of Will. Those two are going to be friends for the rest of this game, and then I'll cast four drops. They just revealed the Ponder at random. Probably feeling good about their choice. I am good with them feeling good about that. Shadow Spear into the Chalice they just protected. And we got a Shame Scoop. Okay, cool. Alrighty. Eight cast. Powder Keg comes in. Null Rod comes in. Kaya's Guile's optional. Ashiok's optional, Plague Engineer is optional. I don't want Supreme Verdict. Hydro Blast, Evening Silence, Celestial Purge, all don't do anything. Rest in Peace stops Emery, and that's about it. I'm not interested in that. Okay, these are the power rankings. Definitely these two, maybe these three, and then maybe these two at the end. Kai is good. Dovin's not good. Force of Negation, I don't really care about. I like having some Force of Wills. I like Dress Down. Yeah, I'm probably just going to bring in my first tier. Swords to Plowshares is only actually good against Emery and bad against Chalice of the Void, which my opponent prioritizes heavily. They kept their hand on the strength of it and then three for one themselves to force to protect it. A Plague Engineer can name like Servo or Thopter. They have a number of things that care about this. Kaya's Guile wipes out their graveyard incidentally which they care about sometimes, and edicting them, I like. Okay. I'm going to stop here for now until we see more of the deck. It is the end of round five, and I have not had a gauntlet in play yet. I'm going to keep this hand. Dress Down and Prismatic Ending are both great in the matchup. City of Traders. Patch is a hula hand. That resolves. I could force that. I could also deal with it later. Null Rod. I like that card. And they led on City of Traders for that. That's going to come back eventually. They can't play on City of Traders forever. Repatches. Do I want to fight over this one? I think so. That's just like a lot of that. I am a little worried about the first one, but I feel like I can work through it. Okay. This is the fight they want to have. Sure. Okay, Force Pitching Emery is the follow-up. Seed of the Synod kills the City of Traders. Oh, back up Emery. Yikes. Yeah, this is a good start. Lotus Petal in the Graveyard. I mean, Null Rod does put a huge damper on this open, but I do have to deal with all the power and toughness that's in play. I'm going to get the Undercity Sewers. Under will be useful eventually. And I'm just going to Null Rod now. That kills their land, and it means they can't use the Lotus Petal in the graveyard. They can cast it, which adds plus two, plus two to their board, which is a thing I'm worried about. Yeah, this is where a Sweeper or a Bowmaster, something of the sort, would be great. I go to 11 here. I only have two more draw steps this game. Narset, not really who I'm looking for right now. I think I'm going to dress down on their end step. That guarantees that I can Prismatic Ending one of the patches. They're in for six. I go to five. End step, Dress Down. Wow, they had Force of Will. Gross. All right. Going to have to fetch and get Meticulous Archive, then die to basically anything. Uh, Put this on top. I can 
prismatic ending one of these patches and go to one. And I don't have double white even to rip into the one of Supreme Verdict. Yeah, they're going to get over the finish line here. The second patchwork and then the pair of forces going to make it happen. Okay, going to happen right now. Okay, Supreme Verdict in. You talked me into it. Plague Engineer also in. You talked me into it. I did board out a plow. Forgot about that, but would have been good there. Kaya's Guile, good here. Maybe actual Kaya's got a chill. She's good against Chalice, but that's not the guard I'm worried about. I will keep this hand. Opponent's on six. Career's on the line here. Game three of the final round. Lotus Petal. Hitting Needle. Not going to fall for that shit. We get Meticulous Archive. Wandering Emperor is a long way away from useful. We get rid of that. I'm curious what they name with this Pithing Needle. Blood is Strand is probably the most annoying name because it's like there are sequences where that just doesn't come up this game and then there are sequences where I lose immediately because of it. They named Polluted Delta. All right, there's one of those used already. Blooded Strand would have been a better name than that. But Rainstorm. I'm going to cast one of these. And draw three polluted deltas. Watch it happen. All right, didn't happen. Played around it. Put back dress down and basic island. And I'll drop this tundra with the intent of playing one of my many planeswalkers next turn. There's a saga. I have the dress down on layaway for that one. And just passing from there. Okay. If I play Narset, I kind of have to reveal that I have dress down. I could play Gideon here. Just emblem up. Make them deal with that. I'm here for it. I also don't mind if this gets countered, which is good because it did. Spent a Lotus Petal to hard cast that. All right. Seat of the Synod. Could brainstorm digging for lands here, or I could just pass and enjoy my dress down. And they did not activate Saga in the end step. What is going on? Just playing perfectly around dress down. Is that what's going on? All right. I'm still dressing down here. I don't want them to like get Mox Opal and then be able to counter my dress down. Mox Opal confirmed. Backup Saga. That one's going to be harder to deal with. Emery. I'm going to brainstorm and see if I can answer this Emery in a way that is better than Force of Will. All right. Rolled up. Put back Bowmaster and Teferi. Emery arrives as a 1 2 because of Dress Down. Doesn't mill anything. Okay, this is a little awkward. I guess I just fetch the Underground Sea and play Teferi. It was awkward because I want to bounce. Urza Saga, but Emery being a 1-1 in play does actually kill Teferi. Bounce the Urza Saga. Find myself some time against that thing. And I'm just going to plow the Emery before they can cast Lotus Petal. And Teferi's here. It's almost time. Uh, little Teferi's here. Big Teferi's also here. Sai Master Thopterus. This is not a card I'm prepared to play against. Horse Pitching Ponder. Marsh Flats plus Little Teferi. I could play Big Teferi, or I could just Narset. It sucks that Narset is just better than Big Teferi. Alright, fine, Narset, get in there. I gotta find answers to this saga, because I'm not out of the woods and my dress down's already spent. Okay, I'm out of the woods. With Teferi Time Raveler, I can Supreme Verdict at instant speed. Bobble. They have to bobble me on their own turn, because if they bobble on my turn, Narset will eat that draw on their turn. Undercity Sewers, don't need a Polluted Delta here. And they did not bobble on my turn. Plus Teferi, minus Narset. Back up Narset, a Ponder. I'm actually going to take the Ponder, because I really want to find Gauntlet and do that at least once this league. Just Moral Victory Gauntlet. Did not activate Saga again. Or now. Didn't float mana either. Okay. They're either playing around Supreme Verdict like a boss, or they're new to this deck or new to Magic Online. For what it's worth, even if they know about the Supreme Verdict, uh, they scooped it. All right, so I'll finish that thought. Even if they know about the Supreme Verdict, at least one of those Saga tokens is free to make. Like, you have mana open in the end step, and then you can just go to your turn and have a 5-5 a five, five or 6-6, six, six, even if you don't want to make the second Saga into the Verdict. But make me use it. You can't just not cast your spell because you know your opponent has an answer to it. Okay. 
a very difficult showing here. And I think whatever universal forces you believe in, we'll call them the magic gods. I think the magic gods were after me here. I sold out on what I believed in to put Orcus Bowmasters into this deck. That was otherwise a beautiful thing. And this was the worst performance of this deck. We activated Ikramoon Gauntlet zero times. And it was the least fun I've had playing the deck across four leagues. Don't even get the moral high ground of being like, oh yeah, well, we lost to Bowmasters. We're trying to do something different. We are a Bowmaster deck. And now it's now it feels like losing actually has stakes rather than like we're memeing and trying to do our best, but it's okay if we lose. Sold out. Got got by Wastelands. Got got by Stifles and Price of Progresses and all of those sort of things. While having the least successful record and the fewest Ikamoon Gauntlet moments of any league to date. Tough way to end the series, but at least the series is over. Somebody in my Discord proposed a build with Karn the Great Creator. A, a back to a blue-white build, just a, like a, a clean Azorius build. One of the Ikramoon Gauntlets was in the sideboard, one main, one board. It's in the Karn package, you can wish for it. Karn also just naturally insulates versus combo, which is one of your tougher matchups. Their build had a shitload of basics and four Supreme Verdicts in the main, which is probably too many, but like three and a bunch of basics certainly at least pads out the Delver matchups. Hindsight, always 2020, but kind of wish I had gone with that build instead of this one. Lessons learned. Rip to this challenge. Rip to this deck. Orcish Bowmasters, I hate you. Barrett, thank you for the challenge. Sorry we didn't convert. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.